For carriers to realize the payoff of their 3G and 4G networks, they need to make sure that their mobile backhaul access networks are cost efficient, reliable, and scalable. Leading carriers from around the world, such as Verizon, are in the process of transforming their old copper-based T1 networks into new packet-based backhaul network architecture. Now in this LRTV documentary, we've asked two of the leading mobile backhaul experts to talk about these critical issues and give their best practices for telcos and cable companies who are navigating this critical networking challenge. At a high level, the operator needs to make sure that whatever they do, they do it for the long term. And that could well mean investing today. On the other hand, for other operators, it could well mean sweating some of their assets for another year or two. Second key guideline is to keep things simple. This transition to packet backhaul is quite complex, and there are some things that the operator doesn't need to do right from the get-go. For example, in LTE, the X2 interface. You don't necessarily need it from launch. And ultimately, you need to make sure that that simplification is also consistent with your longer-term needs. To keep the same example, you may not need the X2 interface today, but you're gonna need it at some point in the future. Of course, best practices depend a lot on the specific service provider requirements, the networks that they have deployed in place already, the operational systems they have, and where they need to scale this network in the future. Um, with that said, there's some common things, some common best practices that we can look at on how to build next generation backhaul networks. One, the bandwidth and performance required by 4G data services. The 300 megabits per customer, per tower, per carrier, drives a tremendous amount of bandwidth in the network. The FlashWave 9500 allows scalability with connection-oriented Ethernet and pluggable Rotom in the core. The second is, how do I operate this network? Is it operationally similar to the practices that I have in place? The large 2G, 3G backhaul networks that are in place have scaled very well with very simple operational tools. FlashWave 9500 with connection-oriented Ethernet on the same platform as the, the TDM and Sonnet services allows that transition to be very simple without retraining the operational and engineering personnel that manage these networks. So there's general agreement that we're moving to a packet-based backhaul future, but the question in the industry is how fast that transition will be. The answer to the question how fast is going to vary according to a number of factors. How much data is the operator seeing uh, coming through the network already today? What kind of resources does the operator have in terms of IP and Ethernet skill sets within its own organization? What kind of capital budget is available? And what is the operator's strategy for end user pricing? If they're going to uh, make data available uh, pretty much unlimited, uh, then they'd better move a hell of a lot faster uh, than the operator that's going to move forward according to a more balanced, uh, tiered uh, pricing portfolio. Fujitsu's mobile backhaul solution addresses carrier concerns by enabling an intelligent transition from existing 2G, 3G mobile backhaul to 4G mobile backhaul and beyond. There are three primary technologies that enable the transition from existing to next generation backhaul networks. Universal switch fabrics, connection-oriented Ethernet with EOX gateway, and pluggable Rotom. Starting with the universal switch fabric, on a single switch fabric card, the FlashWave 9500 packet optical networking platform allows unrestricted switching of TDM, connection-oriented Ethernet, and OTN. This allows for any access technology to be used in the mobile backhaul network. Connection-oriented Ethernet can be deployed to meet the next generation bandwidth requirements in the access, and EOX gateway allows for existing Ethernet over TDM, Ethernet over Sonnet to be interworked into a common connection-oriented Ethernet core. And finally, to be able to scale the connection-oriented Ethernet core to meet the 300 megabits per site, per carrier bandwidth requirement, the simple addition of pluggable Rotom on a card can be added to the FlashWave 9500 to scale from a single channel to 88 channels and allow optical bandwidth scaling to 10, 40, and 100 gigabits per channel. So we've covered the technology issues and the solutions for packet backhaul. Now what are the next steps that carrier executives need to take? The transition uh, to packet backhaul is going to be a different one for different operators. Uh, each operator has its own starting point, it has a different installed base, 
Uh, some operators are ready to go with LTE 4G today. Uh, some have barely started out rolling out 3G. Some operators have a lot of uh, layer three uh, smarts in their organizations and others don't. Uh, the key thing uh, for each different operator is to get the most out of their installed base but consistent uh, with being able to invest uh, in solutions that are going to be good for the long term. Carriers should look for packet optical technologies that allow them to leverage existing access and core network infrastructure along with the people and operational procedures that are in place, but at the same time invest in next generation technologies like connection oriented Ethernet, OTN, DWDM and Rotom.